So this is the Ericasynth DB01 bassline. This is a monophonic synth with a single oscillator. We can switch between a triangle, sawtooth, and a square. We also have this detune feature, which is good for getting those kind of ravey sort of sounds. This is a bucket brigade delay, which has got some modulation on it, so it kind of creates that detune effect. So it's more like unison than detune. Um, we have a sub wave as well. Anyway, let's go back to our sequence. And we'll have a look at this filter. So this is the Ericsson's kind of design filter, which is quite aggressive. Um, so let's just go back here. So we are in sawtooth. We have low pass or band pass. So you can hear that. Gets that kind of funny, kind of fizzly stuff going on. So just a word about the envelopes, we have two envelopes, we have our VCA envelope and our VCF envelope. These are just simple kind of decay envelopes. Um, at the moment, you're not hearing anything on the VCF because we have this down, this is a, an attenuator for the envelope on the VCF. And then we have this LFO, so the LFO can be either synced or not synced. So currently we have it at a very high rate. We can change the LFO settings by hitting shift and LFO here. So we have shape, from sine wave, triangle, sawtooth, ramp, square wave, sample and hold. So we also have a couple of more kind of irregular shapes. Uh, after the square wave, we have this triple decay sawtooth. So that kind of sounds like this. This is just working on the filter. So you can hear it's kind of three kind of sawtooths kind of decaying. Um, and then we have a dual saw with a ramp at the end. Um, and then we have a dual saw plus a triangle. Um, and then finally, we just have the noise. So if we go back to the sign, get that right up into the audio range, then you can get kind of some of those vowel-y kind of sounds. So yeah, the LFO, because it can go up into audio range, we can also we can use that on the on the oscillator here as well. And we can get some kind of FME sort of tones out of it as well. So one thing I haven't mentioned is the baseline also has this drive circuit. So drive is a crossfader between a driven or like a, an overdrive circuit and 
the regular circuit so instead of just overdriving the whole thing it's a crossfader Um, so yeah, overall it's a pretty aggressive synthesizer. Um, we also have noise here, which I didn't mention. Um, so yeah, let's have a look at the sequencer. So there's a few different ways that we can program the sequencer. Um, let's start by doing kind of key input. So we can uh, hit shift and then play, and we have like a keyboard along the bottom here. Um, I've got some drums running, and I'm in a four, a 64 step pattern. So if I then want to record that, I just hit record and I can Now if I hit back, I can see my sequence here. And I can add things like accents by hitting shift and accent. Now I'm in the accent programming page as you can see here. Um, accent just adds a bit more volume to the envelope and uh, a little bit of cut off. Uh, we can then program slides. I could also just go back and just say add in another here. Maybe a bit too high there. Um, and then we have the mod page. So mod is modulation of the cutoff frequency. So if we are modulating the cutoff frequency, we can do that by either selecting a step and then moving this. Or we can actually just hit record and then hold record and then. And it will lock the, uh, the cutoff position to a specific step. So if I open up that, you can hear that. Um, we then have pitch envelopes, so this will add like a pitch envelope to a specific step. And we can add the depth of that and then the length. So you can hear that was quite aggressive. So yeah, I mean, that's the kind of basics of programming the sequencer. Um, we also have an arpeggiator mode. Um, and we can lock that by hitting the select button here. I can't seem to see whether or not we could record that in. That would have been nice if we could Say for instance, hit record and then just hold like, do that and then that would be in the sequence there, but I can't, that doesn't seem to work at the moment. Maybe that's something they that can add in a future kind of firmware update. Yeah. <laughs> 
Another way that we can program this sequencer is with the random pattern mode. So if I just start my sequence here, obviously I've got some drums externally going, um, and then this is my 64 step pattern. Um, if I go to random pattern here, um, we now these buttons, this will do a complete random pattern, so it will randomize all of the functions. Um, but we can also do those individually. So we have uh, random accents, random slides, random mods, and random pitch envelope. We then have uh, gates, so like when when the steps are going to happen or step input. And then we have gate length and pitch. And we can add a range to all of these as well. So for instance, if I have, say, 99% steps, if I hit this one, it's going to play the steps all the time. Um, now I can reduce that to, say, 30. Um, and same with all of these. We can put a range on all of these uh, parameters. So, for instance, here's like 60% of gate modulation or gate length. So... Um, and then I can put a range of the CV or the notes. So this would be the full range. So um, but maybe I want to limit that to just a couple of octaves. So we can add accents and again we can do a percentage of accents. Uh, same with slides as well and mods and pitch envelope. Um, so now if we go back to our sequence here. Uh, we can easily copy and paste the steps, individual steps. So say I like this step, so I can hit hold the step and then above the copy button here, we hit the bar. So that's copied that and now I could add that there by hitting above the paste, this one. So yeah, you get the idea, you can easily copy and paste steps, but you can also easily copy and paste whole kind of sequences or whole kind of sections of sequences. So for instance, if I go to the copy page like this, I could say I copy those steps. And now if I go to the paste page, say I want those steps from here to here, this will paste them in. So now... So yeah, there's lots of easy ways of kind of adjusting and generating sequences quickly. Um, we can also do this kind of transpose. So this is now my just my 12 notes in the keyboard. We can drop an octave. So it would be nice again, same with the arpeggiator, if we could record that in. So if I hit record, it would be nice if I could... But unfortunately, it doesn't seem that that's available at the moment. But obviously, that could be um, something that is adjusted in in a future update or something. So one thing that's quite nice about the baseline is it does have a lot of connectivity. So we've got clock in and clock out. MIDI in, MIDI out, and then we've got CV out, gate out, CV in, so that's pitch CV in, and gate in, and then uh, cut off frequency in. So with that in mind, I thought I would create a little kind of modular setup to go with this that's being controlled via this. I mean, I'm just doing kind of droney sort of stuff but obviously you could use this to sequence your modular or whatever you or vice versa you could use a modular to sequence this so anyway let's just hear what we've got going on so this is one of my modular voices um, so i've just got a single oscillator into a filter some modulation and then some bcas or low pass gates and then some spring reverb 
So I'll turn that on. And the bass line is actually coming into the auxiliary input of the Optimix here as well. So um, this is kind of rotated sideways just to kind of fit everything into the screen, but you get the idea. Anyway, so that's one of the voices that I've got in the modular, and then I've got this kind of noisy thing as well. Now the bass line is doing a kind of drone underneath, so... And also the this... That kind of wobbly envelope is coming back into the CV input here. We've also got the internal modulation here as well. And as I said, it's all being mixed into the modular and then going through the spring reverb together. And the pitch of this oscillator is being controlled by this. So anyway, you get the idea. You can kind of expand on the voice of the bass line with a modular system and still use this as your kind of controller for stuff. So the Erica Synths DB01 bass line. This is a nice little monophonic synthesizer. It has a very distinctive sound. This filter is... It's very Erica synths. And I think you kind of have to... You kind of have to be into that. You have to be into the sound of it. And I don't think it's for everyone. It's very... It is quite aggressive. Especially with this drive circuit. It's going to easily cut through any mix. But it's a good sounding little thing. It's built really well and the connectivity is great. The sequencer is really easy to use and there's lots of like really nice features about it. A couple of things I didn't mention, we have pattern chaining, so we can chain patterns. We've got a number of different banks, so lots of kind of ability with this sequencer to use it as a controller for other things. Um, so in that sense, it's actually very fully featured. We've also got MIDI in and out. Uh, MIDI in and out means that we can use this essentially as a MIDI to CV converter as well. The ARP record functionality that I mentioned earlier when we were looking at the arpeggiator is definitely coming in a future firmware update, so that's only going to expand the ability of the sequencer. So the obvious comparison here is the 303, but this is definitely not a 303. The fact that we've got this subwave, the detune, obviously all the kind of connectivity makes it far superior than a 303. In terms of monosynth feature set, it's kind of closer to a 101, but it's not got that kind of roll and D filter. It's, the filter is definitely much more aggressive. So if you're making kind of harder styles of acid, techno, that sort of stuff, this might be more suitable for you. Currently it's 460 euros XVAT direct from Erica. Um, that's the only price I could find at the moment. Um, so it's got some stiff competition. It's quite pricey, you know? I think if you really like the sound of it, then I think it could definitely be for you. So anyway, yeah, thanks for watching.